Hello and welcome. Today we are going to be bottling some sparkling wine. My name is Nick Windrick. I am a recent graduate of the University of Florida with a degree in food science. My research focuses on taking wine from Florida wineries and creating a sparkling wine product. Let's head into the lab and start bottling. So now we're in the food engineering and processing lab. This is where I do my carbonation research. The objective of my research is to assist the Florida wine industry in creating, evaluating, and educating on a new sparkling wine product. So what I do is I go to the winery and I collect the finished wine that they have created. Once the wine is in the lab, I assess it for the alcohol, sugar, and density. With that raw data, I can input it into an Excel spreadsheet that I have created as well as a few other of my collaborators on this research. That helps to tell us what pressure we need to carbonate the wine to to create the sparkling wine. One of the first parameters that I look at when, when looking at the Excel spreadsheet is what volume per volume that we want to carbonate to. So today, we are carbonating to three volume per volume. What this means is that for every one volume of liquid, there's three volumes of carbon dioxide infused into the liquid. Henry's law refers to how much carbonation is in the liquid at a given temperature. Another principle that is important is Lesha to Lace principle, which talks about after the carbonation goes in the bottle and is sealed, some of the carbon dioxide will leave the wine and enter the headspace until there is an equilibrium pressure that is reached between the headspace and the wine. So in the lab, the process of carbonation that I use is the forced carbonation method. The reason is it's cost effective and efficient. Now I'm going to hook up the CO2 tank to the keg so that we can bottle some wine. The first step is to hook it up to the CO2 tank and turn on the CO2 tank. The next step is to hook up the output to the keg. This allows the product to leave the keg and go into the bottle when we have that set up. The next step is the input of the gas into the keg. This is important for pushing the wine out of the keg and into the bottle. Now it's time to bottle. We're going to take a 187 milliliter champagne bottle. These are designed to handle the pressures that we're working with. We're going to crank down and this allows for a sealed vessel so that none of the carbonation can leak out. The first step we do is we pressurize the bottle. This is important because it creates the same environment that the keg is under. This allows for none of the CO2 to leave the system. Once the bottle is pressurized, we can then turn on the solution side, which is where the wine is going to be drawn in. I'm slowly going to open this release valve, which very slowly releases the pressure that is in the bottle. When this happens, the wine is going to be drawn into the bottle. So what is basically happening is CO2 is leaving the tank and it's going in two directions. The first is to pressurize the bottom and the second is to go into the keg, push the wine out of the output into the bottle, pushing the CO2 that has been filled into the bottom out through this release valve. The wine is now filling the bottle and once it reaches this reference bottle of 180 milliliters, I'll then stop it and depressurize it. So now that the wine has been filled, we can turn off the solution valve and slowly release the pressure. When this is happening, I'll take a, take a wine cork and place it in the corker. You can see the carbonation come to equilibrium with the atmosphere. Once this is done, we take it over to the corker, set it up, and cork. Now we have a cork bottle of wine. The second to last step is to put a cap on it, similar to a beer bottle cap. This is to ensure that none of the carbonation will leave the bottle. It's a secondary measure to make sure. And now you have a final product of sparkling wine. Some of the wine we simply just cap. The reason for this is we want to test the amount of carbonation that is actually in the wine to verify how much carbonation that we think is in there in theory. We do this with a Zyme and Nigel pierce test. This instrument pierces the bottle and reads how much pressure is in the bottle. So now I will be demonstrating the pierce test. The first step is to lower it and push it on. The next step is to 
to shake the bottle, releasing the carbonation. Once it's shaken, we look at the pressure. This is verification that the amount of carbon dioxide in the wine is what we want. Once we have the, the sparkling wine corked and capped, the next step is to take it to a sensory panel to assess what the ideal level of carbonation is.